O Lord, Alpha and Omega, great I am, Jehovah, Jireh, Je Lord, Lord, if you would just, Lord, if you would just. Are we actually even doing this whole prayer thing right? Let's talk about it. A huge thank you to the guys from Pray Period for partnering with me on this video. If you're digging this shirt and you just want some daily encouragement for the importance of prayer, go check them out at PrayPeriod.com. All right, guys, I want to tell you a story that my pastor often tells, and every time I hear it, I get something else from it. So I'm hoping you'll get something from it too. So the story revolves around this man named Bob, and for 30 years, Bob wakes up, and every morning at 9 a.m., he prays to God, and he says, Hey, Jesus, it's Bob. And now this man's prayers have gotten so popular, everyone in town would come and they would ask Bob to pray for them because his prayers always seem to get answered. He became very popular as a prayer warrior, if you will, that his prayers always seemed to go through and he'd always start out 9 a.m. Hey Jesus, it's Bob. Now one day Bob was in a really bad car accident and he ended up in a coma. And they thought Bob was completely brain dead, but they would see Every morning at 9 a.m. there would be a spike in his EEG, showing that there is, was some brain activity every morning at 9 a.m. Bob was in this coma for about two months whenever he finally woke up. And the doctors came in and they checked on him, but they had one question. Hey Bob, can you tell us a little bit about your coma? Anything that you remember? And he says, no, nothing really. And they say, well, well every morning at about 9 a.m., your, your EEG would spike, like something was happening. Were you dreaming or were you thinking? Were you awake? What was going on, Bob? And Bob said, oh yeah. Every day for the past 30 years, I'd get up at 9 a.m. and I'd say, hey Jesus, it's Bob. Well, while I was in my coma, every morning at 9 a.m., Jesus would walk through that door and he'd say, hey Bob, it's Jesus. That's the kind of prayer life we need with God. We don't need to over-spiritualize, over-religify, that's a word, prayer. It was never meant to be that. God never meant for us to, oh, Jehovah Jireh, Father great out are in heaven. God wants you to come to him like you're talking to a friend. In fact, Jesus tells us exactly how we should pray in Luke 11, 1 through 4. It says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Now I love that prayer, but I want us to come to a common understanding of that prayer. When Jesus is telling this to his disciples, he's not telling us, hey, say these exact words every time you talk to God. No, he's simply giving us a template. He's saying, these are the types of things you should say. Every time you pray, you should go through these. And, and I wish I had time in one video to go through everything that is in the Lord's Prayer and all the meaning. And maybe I'll do a whole series just on the Lord's Prayer. If you like that idea, go and hit that thumbs up and let me know you want a series on the Lord's Prayer. But for right now, I want to focus on the first word of the Lord's Prayer. So when Jesus tells us how to pray, the first thing he says is this, Father, hallowed be your name. Now I'm going to stop right there because the word he uses is father. In Greek, it is the, the word pater. Father does not do this word justice because we think father, we go father, right? That's what we think. We think father, but really that word is more like daddy, dad, pa. It's not like you're talking to your strict ruling father and trying to explain why you got a C in geography. It's like you're talking to your loving daddy while out on the boat on a fishing trip on the perfect morning. You're not supposed to go to God like he is a father. You're supposed to go to God like he is daddy. Like he is sitting there anxious and eager to hear about your day, to hear about your life, to hear about the things you're experiencing and going through. That is how you were to speak to God. And sometimes we get this wrong and we just over-spiritualize and over-religify prayer. But prayer was never meant to be that. 
It's not supposed to be this big thing. Actually, Jesus criticizes the Pharisees for over-spiritualizing their prayer life, whereas Jesus says, that's your daddy. Just talk to him. Talk to God. Tell him how good he is. Thank him for what he's given you. Thank him for forgiving you. Ask for forgiveness, but that is your daddy. Tell him how you feel. You can go to God in every situation, in every moment. You don't have to close your eyes and bow your head. You don't have to lift your hands to heaven. You can do those things, and I highly recommend you do those things. There's actually several positions to prayer. If you like a series on positions of prayer and the different meanings in that throughout the Bible, hit that thumbs up button and tell me positions of prayer. Okay, last one of those I'm gonna throw in. But we don't have to do all these things. We can just, while driving down the road, please don't close your eyes, but while driving down the road, you can say, God, my life has been flipped, changed, thrown upside down. I don't know what is going on. I don't know where to go, but God, I know that you are good. You can just say, God, I wanna tell you about my day. God, I've had a good day, it's been good. Or God, I've had a bad day, it's been bad. God doesn't just want to hear your requests and your demands and your needs, but God wants you to come to Him like a loving Father and just tell Him how you're doing. Just tell Him where you are. Take your needs to Him, of course, but also come to Him like He is a loving Father. He is a loving Daddy. And I know maybe some of us out there, we've never had that in our life, but I'm here to tell you that's who God is. He is a good, good father. But I want to encourage you, and I actually want to challenge you this week. I want to leave you with a challenge that for the next seven days, you make it a point to talk to God. And not necessarily pray, not necessarily ask for anything, but just talk to God. It's actually a scientific fact that people who pray are less stressed. Science will often say that's because we believe something, but I think it's because we actually know that we have a loving God, we have a loving daddy who is on our side that will lift our burdens, that will take them away because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's a scientific proven fact that those who pray are less stressed. Have you felt stressed lately? Have you prayed about it? Have you talked to God about it? Have you went to God? So take my seven day challenge. Next seven days, pray to God. Just talk to God like you're talking to a loving father while out on the boat fishing or while eating breakfast. That's who God wants to be. He doesn't want to be this commanding ruler that you turn to and beg for the things in your life you need. He wants you to come to him intimately and personally like you're talking to a loving father. Go to God, pray to God, Make it a point this week to just talk to God. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about prayer, and I hope this week you're just gonna talk to God like you're talking to a loving Father. If you enjoyed this video, I put out content just like this every single week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment telling me what you enjoyed, how this stood out to you, or what your prayer life looks like. All right, guys, keep living that bold life.